Okay, this sermon is entitled, Obedience Dams. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses, all right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 145 reads, I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Now there are these retarded false prophets out there who claim that you have to be obedient in order to be saved. And this defies what the entire Bible teaches on salvation. It makes these false prophets look stupid. They have egg all over their faces, and they only have one verse that supports this. It's Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 9, and it reads, And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Now, these people fail to understand that the word obey in the Greek, hupakawo, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, simply means to listen under. When the gospel is presented, the only thing you can do is listen to it and then believe it or not. The word obey in a lot of cases just simply means to believe. To obey the gospel means to believe the gospel. It does not mean to adhere to a bunch of laws or to be subservient or acquiescent or slavish to a bunch of rules and regulations and commandments. But these unsaved false prophets, that's what they want you to believe. And what these people don't understand is that they are superseding the obedience of Christ with their own obedience. Turn over to Romans chapter 5. Let's take a look at verse 19 and it reads, For as by one man's disobedience, that would be Adam, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Now the Bible makes it very clear that there's only one form of obedience that makes us righteous, and that would be imputing God's righteousness to us, and it's the obedience of one. He's comparing Jesus Christ to Adam. Adam was disobedient, and then Jesus, when he died on the cross for our sins, was obedient, and his obedience is what gives us righteousness. If you think it's your obedience, you are basically spitting in Jesus' face, demoting what he did, rendering it worthless. You're saying that it's not his obedience, the obedience of one, it's my obedience. And that is absolute blasphemy. Now turn over to Romans chapter 10. When it comes to the law, if a person is saved, they're not under a law. And if you want to be under the law, you won't get saved. And the only people that put themselves under some type of a law, when the Bible refers to that as bondage, are the unsaved. So in Romans chapter 10, it reads in verse 4, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Now what does that mean, the end of the law? The end of means that it's over. The end of a book means that if you go any further, there's nothing there. You've reached the ending, the finality, and when it comes to the law, Christ is the end, meaning that he obeyed the law completely, and this only counts to those who believe on him, and they get God's imputed righteousness. So if you want to be under a law, all you can do is fail. You can't be saved by a law. The Bible makes it very clear that the law was not even purposed to save us. It was there to show us our iniquities and our sins and our infirmities and our weaknesses and our frailty. Turn over to James chapter 2. The Bible makes it very clear that if we fail in one point, we are guilty of all. What this means is that it's all or nothing when it comes to the law, and nobody obeys the law completely. It reads in verse 10, For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Verse 11, For he that said, Do not commit adultery, said also, Do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, Thou art become a transgressor of the law. What this means is that if you keep part of the law, that's not good enough because the simple fact that you've failed in other areas means that you're guilty of breaking the whole law. Now turn back to Psalm 39. Okay, I'm sick of these stupid people that think they're going to make it into heaven because they're obedient. First of all, no one is obedient. Nobody obeys Jesus. Nobody obeys God. We're all sinners. 
And this is nothing more than a delusion. In Psalm 39, the Bible makes it very clear that even in our best attempts to keep the law, we still fail. It reads in verse 5, Behold, thou hast made my days as an handbreadth, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity, Selah. So, what this tells us is that in any attempt to obey the law in your best state, it's still in vain. It's still vanity. Now turn over to Galatians chapter 3. The law cannot save anyone, and all it will do is damn you if you think that's what's going to get you into heaven. Because what you're doing is you're rejecting grace, you're rejecting the finished work of the cross, you're rejecting God's means of salvation, and you're trying another way, and it won't work. In Galatians chapter 3, let's take a look at a couple verses here. Let's start off with verse 11, and it reads... But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. What that means is that the only way to live or to have eternal life is to have faith in Christ. The law can't save anyone. It can't justify anyone. If you think that's why you're going to heaven, you're not justified. You will stand in front of God on judgment day coming short. It won't be good enough. And what these stupid, deluded foolish people don't understand is that God's standard is perfection. It's something you can't attain. It's unachievable. That's why obedience damns because you're not trusting in Christ alone. There's nothing wrong with obedience. There's nothing wrong with trying to obey the law or the commandments, but it won't save you. And these fools out there who make that a part of salvation, they're not saved. They can't be saved. It's damned if they do. It's damned if they don't. Even if you did keep the law perfectly in your own stupid mind, it's still not good enough because it can't justify you. So watch out for these false prophets who have no hope and who are nothing but works-trusting, self-righteous, neo-Pharisees who will not be justified and can only look forward to condemnation, because that's all the law does. The law worketh wrath. The law brings upon people condemnation and judgment and hellfire. It never saves anyone, because if the law could save you, then Jesus Christ died for nothing. He died in vain, and he wasted his time going to the cross. What these people are basically doing is saying that their law-keeping is more powerful than the blood of Jesus, and like I've already said, that is the pinnacle of blasphemy. And these people are going straight to hell in their obedience. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.